We begin. In July of 1944, during World War II, at an estate on the outskirts of a small town within German-occupied Tuscany, Italy, with identical twin sisters, Martha and Julia. Martha became deaf during early childhood, which their mother, Irune, blames Julia for, as doctors diagnosed the cause as blunt force trauma she applied to Martha while in the womb. Their father, Eric, serves as a general in the German army, and so is rarely home. Julia's nanny tells her the legend of the White Lady, a malicious spirit of a woman whose jealous lover murdered her, and was then hanged from a tree on an island in the center of the nearby lake. Julia asks Martha to accompany her through the forest to the lake the following day to take photographs, which is Julia's hobby. However, Martha's not in the house the next morning, and so Julia begins taking photos alone, when she suddenly discovers Martha's corpse floating in the lake, and after carrying it back to shore, is found by their parents. Irune mistakes Julia for Martha, leading Julia to assume Martha's identity. Julia's mental state deteriorates in the days following Martha's death. She struggles to remember the events of the day Martha died due to memory lapses. While exploring the surrounding woods, Julia finds the corpse of her boyfriend, Lapo, a soldier of the Italian resistance, shot and killed by German Nazi soldiers, just before she's also shot by them. Irune finds Julia and she recovers, though her story is misconstrued in the local newspaper, stating that the Nazis saved her instead. After Martha's funeral, Julia indirectly reveals her identity to Irune by playing the piano, which Martha was unable to do. Suspecting that Irune played a role in Martha's death, Julia requests instructions to contact the white lady from her nanny. Back on the lake's shore at the forest's edge, Julia recovers the reel of film which captured images moments before Martha's death, before Julia boards a small boat to reach the island where the white lady's lover was hanged. After using tarot cards to communicate with the white lady, Julia obtains the key to Martha's trinket box and wakes up back in her bathtub at the estate house. In the box, Julia finds a letter from Martha explaining that she had merely been pretending to be deaf all these years, due to Irune traumatizing her during their childhood, which unexpectedly led to Irune loving her more. Martha admits that she felt guilty about Irune's favoritism towards her, and her disdain towards Julia, and therefore intended to disguise herself as Julia, before enraging and being murdered by Irune, so that Julia could take Martha's place and be loved. Martha also confesses to having been pregnant with Lapo's child, telling Irune that it was Julia who was pregnant as part of her plan to become the casualty of Irune's wrath. Julia travels to her family's crypt to determine if Martha was truly pregnant, where she cuts into her womb and removes a deformed, two-headed fetus from Martha's embalmed body, before promising to repair the damage later. Julia then discovers that Irune's made arrangements with a mental asylum to take her away, and travels back to the estate house. Before developing the reel of film from the day Martha died, Julia turns on a nearby audio recorder, begins recording, and has another memory lapse, during which she interrogates and shoots Irune, killing her, before finding the key to her childhood bedroom on Irune's body. Suddenly, bombs strike the estate, causing a power outage at the house, before Julia investigates her childhood bedroom, where she plays with her puppet theater to revisit her memories and collect her thoughts, which forces her to realize that she dismembered Irune and buried her body under a nearby bridge. Afterward, she returns to the estate to find that the power has returned, allowing her to develop the film reel, which clearly shows Julia killing Martha that day at the lake, and not Irune. Immediately afterward, Italian resistance soldiers break into the house and ambush her, also capturing and torturing Eric before killing him, and despite being ordered to also kill Julia, a soldier takes pity on her, sparing her life and freeing her, before leaving. Now alone, Julia returns to the dark room and plays back the audio recording of Irune's confession, which makes no mention of Martha, as if she never existed. Irune continues to explain recent events as if only Julia were present, and has been inflicting bodily harm upon herself, potentially indicating that Martha doesn't exist as Julia's twin sister, but instead that Julia's actually just Martha's alternate personality. Confused and distraught upon hearing this, Julia returns to her puppet theater once more, 
using it as a tool to attempt to recall her difficult childhood from her fragmented memories. Doing so indicates the possibility that Irune gave birth to only one child, Martha, and that Irune was admitted to the asylum herself for drug addiction treatment. Prior to this, she was extremely abusive to Martha, both verbally and physically, which caused a split in her personality, a quiet, beloved Martha, and a troublesome, loathed Julia. After recalling these memories, Julia calls the town priest, who convinces her to come to the church, where staff from the asylum finally take her away. Julia continues to be self-harmful while in the asylum, habitually and ceaselessly masturbating until she bleeds, requiring her to be forcefully restrained while screaming and speaking gibberish for days on end. The doctors treat her with medication for schizophrenia, which allows her to coherently reflect on her memories and previous events. She recognizes that some or all of them weren't real, but realizes that it ultimately doesn't matter, as it's in the past, and she decides to move forward, mentally, killing, the embodiment of these thoughts, represented as a doll of herself in her mind, by slitting its wrist. Afterward, Julia seemingly emerges as the dominant and only remaining personality within Martha's body, lucidly explaining her situation, claiming that she's finally recovered, and stating that she's now ready to return home.